Kush Sabrin 3, A Buxigun, The Other Side of Nowhere. By e. L. James Bolin and Sakida Dennis. Chapter 1, The Devil in the Details. Years passed, and Kush took after his grandfather, Samo. He was a prominent leader, an avid member of the tribal council, and spent plenty of time taking care of his grandfather's horses. Now 21 years old. It was sudden because Mamalean and Bali passed on the same day three months ago, and his beloved grandfather, Samuel, had passed several months earlier. During his depression, he spent most of his time caring for his loving grandmother, Martha, whom he referred to as Pigma. One day, as he was on his way to visit his grandmother, he heard a voice say, he will be there soon. Looking around, he sees no one. Shaking his head, he continues on his way to her house. Bigma was on her knees, pulling weeds and trimming up some plants in her garden, ran to her side. Bigma, why are you doing all this work? He told you it would come first thing this morning. Bigma smiles, plants will lose all their energy to all a dead leaf when all you have to do is cut off the dead leaves to help that plant stay healthy. Plus, chill, he was doing this before you were born, and he be doing this before he did. Big Miss Word said in Tush, Big Ma, don't say that. Big Ma, seeing his reaction, chill, help me up. These past few months have been hard on you, but it comes with life. Your grandfather and me were happy, and they saw Bali and Kakaoya. They were always in good spirits, seeing the glow of love on them, and that's all Sabas wants for us to be here on earth, happy. Me and Kakaoya were on our second marriage. Kush was surprised, second. Smiling, Bigma said, Yes, chill, your grandfather was 20 years older than me. Our first marriage was with people our age, and we mature differently according to what we go through. Bad women, well, most women mature faster than men, anyways. So, if you can't grow old with someone, find someone who you can grow old with. Someone who makes you smile and makes you happy. Your grandfather used to say, It's better to be with an angry, frustrated, sad, uptight and whatever else Sabas is dealing with them with, as a believer, than to be with a happy demon. The tower is filled with stories of people being unequally yoked. Now, come on here, let me fix some tea, and we can sit on the gary. As Kush walked his grandmother to the house, he was still in shock to learn that his grandparents had been married before. Bigma lived alone, now that all her grandchildren were grown and gone, a common sign around these parts. She put on the ticket and pulled out some lemon and johnny. Come in my tea. Kush said. That's for reducing menstrual pain, Bigma. Laughing, she said, well, you're not even half weather, you know a little, but you can learn about all these herbs now, son. Tese. Herbs will always have more than one benefit. Chamomile is good for menstrual pain but is also suitable for treating diabetes, lowering blood sugar, slowing and preventing osteoporosis, reducing inflammation, and is used for cancer treatment. It's good for preventing and treating cold symptoms, and the reason I'm making some for you. It helps with sleep and relaxation. Those bags under your eyes are big enough to go shopping with. Kush smiled as he grabbed a cup and poured some Johnny in it. As Big Mac continued, she grabbed a mason jar filled with dried basil and sat it down on the counter. There is a wide variety of basil. Here, smell this. Kush took a big whiff as Big Mac continued. That sweet basil, it has a powerful smell and a recognizable flavor. Now test it. Kush takes a small bite as Big Mac grabs a few more mason jars and passes them by Kush. This here is lemon basil. It has a tangy lemony taste, while mint basil has a refreshing minty taste. Al basil cantans antioxidants. Many plants are more potent dry than fresh. However, with fresh basil, you gain the most benefits from them. They help you fight free radicals in the body, which leads to cell damage and increases your risk of cancer, ARTCs, arthritis, and diabetes. Always plant these herbs in a garden. They last a year long, and they fight your fight for you. Lavender, cilantro, oregano, chives, rosemary, sage, lemon balm, chamomile, thyme, and mint. You can thank me later. That's why your grandpa and he lived so long. Plus, your grandpa walked two meals every day. Big Ma poured them a cup of tea, and they walked out still and sat on the porch. This tastes pretty good, Big Ma. She just smiled. 
Silence Cover Demas de Enjoy Pirtia. Big Message, You Now We Can Talk to Plants, Trees, and the Likes. Y Treat Them Right, They Treat Me Right. Your grandmother, Cacaoya, was a seer and a chlorokinesis. She called sea and feel things before they happen. Says the one that taught me about plants a long time ago and taught me that even plants have a spirit. We, humans, are the only things that have souls. Everything else has a spirit, and when he got enlightened, he thought she knew it beforehand, and that's why she helped me get stronger. She was a beautiful lady in sea and out, didn't mind sharing a grandson with her. Kush looked at Pigma, he didn't know that. Mama Leon told me how. A post, nah, that was done that he told me how Banjini Kibu heard the trees and birds talk and how Sabas created everything with a spirit, even if it didn't have a soul. Shaking your head, and did you know your grandfather was the first to be enlightened with three gifts? He calls a person's heart, a double portion of Banjini Kibu, his father's gift, and his gift of understanding and speaking a languages. It was Kate. Kush said, Alihist or Paliglat, Big Ma. But, no, he didn't know that. We never got to that part. Mamma Leon was telling me the story, and we stopped at Tang and Abuxigun, getting knocked out down river in New Orleans, well, war used to be called New Orleans, and we never talked about the war. They want to. Minor battles and stop the army heading from El Paso, Texas, and another group was heading toward them from Phoenix, Arizona. That's about how far we got. After he helped Bali get the nerve to approach Mama Leon, she was head over heels in love ever since. He was happy for her. We didn't get together much after that because of the conflict with the Nakatas, back then. Plus, between her relationship with Bali, that conflict, and the upkeep of the farm, it kept her busy. Taking a sip of tea, Big Ma said, Yes, Lord, she loved her son Bali. Well, Sona Buxigun and Dan were just 14 and 10 when they got captured by some slab catchers and kidnapped on one of those ships that float above the water. Being only 14 and 10, those two brothers spoke with authority, and Abuxigun was also one Elava singer. They killed the entire crew, and the slaves took the ship and started one of the greatest revolutions of all time. Those men stuck by him for 17 years until Dan was killed, and Abuxigun took it badly because Dan died, saving his life. They went from being slaves to being the most wanted men in history. Helped those slaves get enlightened on their way to New York, and Sabas gave them unique gifts. Kush asked, what happened to Abu Oxygen? He don't hear people talk about him much. Big Man said, that man just disappeared after Don's death. His wife, who was with twins, and Don's wife moved to Lake Providence after the New York uprising. They were sent here for their safety. You know that big, old lone knife your father carries. Kush replied, yes. Taking another sip of tea, she said, that knife belongs to Dan, he got it from an old man on that there ship, his name was Old One. You know what? Ieye tell you about the war and those men tomorrow, just come. Much earlier. You should know by now, he get up at 5 am, not know the same. My day is winding down around that time. Now help me finish feeding the animals and get them some water before they have a revolution themselves. They fed all the animals and filled the water into the different watering troughs. Bigma took some of the water and washed the sweat from her face. Do you drink plenty of water, son? Nobody drinks water anymore. Theirs is about 75% water, and our body is 55 to 60% water. People didn't drink water. They drank sodas, beer, and liquor, but no water. What kind of sense is that? You need water to grow plants, and we need water to cleanse our bodies of toxins. Kush understood no one came to see Bigma anymore, so she rambled a lot when. A was there. Elin gains the trough, Jasmine, you and Dan Daddy taught me that years ago, and he still drank plenty of it. Bigma walked too slowly for Kush, but didn't mind as they finished their tasks. Forty-five minutes later, Big Ma and Kush returned to the house. Son, he needs some easy cold lemonade now. Care for some. Kush wiping the sweat from his brow. Yes, me. She poured them both a tall glass and sat under the ass on it. Kush said aloud, he don't think he could be a slave, 
Big Ma, out there in that heat from sun up to sundown. Big Ma just smiled. Well, if you were one from an infant until an adult, you wouldn't know the difference. Understand the physiological, psychological, and spiritual damage it did to our people. Yes, it helps to learn who we were before, during, and after slavery, however, no one cared, and often, even we didn't. We didn't care about ourselves, family, or even our ancestry. We didn't care about anything. That can heal our wounds. There is someone out there, somewhere, being a slave for someone right now. Our people's first enslavement was in Egypt, then Babylon, then the Trans-American or Atlantic slave trade. The Trans-American was different from the rest of our enslavement because they achieved our identity, and we had to find out who we were. We acted like fools when we knew who we were, however, our disobedience and pre put us in our predicament. We had to be humbled and humiliated to appreciate our existence in the first place. It was a whole new story after that. Then the Avenians enslaved U.S. Why U.S.? Something called the Iclomazon. You must understand that. The Iclomazon is passed from father to son. The DNA marker, PN2, is the background of at least 73% of all people in Africa today. The hue of the skin don't matter. It's those markers in the DNA that do. The M2 and the 215M35 are expressed throughout Africa, but the PN2 is their father. Kush had a look on his face, and Big Ma laughed. One of these markers is the reason the Avenians had to us. Our DNA has been our downfall since the beginning of time. Before the Avenians, man discredited us as an intelligent race of people for centuries. Since our people have been on this planet, these upper and jealous people were like they were when we were enslaved in Egypt, they are the yards like that of Pharaoh. But it was the Moors, and they were Bacchetilian skins and queens who civilized the wild wheat trees from the Caucasus Mountains. They came to Egypt for over 700 years and eventually ruled over Spain, Portugal, North Africa, and Southern France, primarily Spain and Portugal. To enslave? No, to teach and educate. But our beloved Sokayet first president of the United States, George Washington, was probably the first one, maybe, maybe not, he don't know. But he had a debate on how to enslave the Moors, signed, and he quote, if we would agree to take the fetes and turbans of the Moors, jets and remove the sandals from their feet and enforce severe punishment, and to also swear adietos between ourselves to religiously and fastfully not to allow anyone to teach the Moorish children, who they really were or who their forefathers were, and only allow the Moorish children to be taught that they were truly Negroes, black people, and colored folks. Two hundred years from today the Moorish people would not know their nationality nor the national name of their forefathers. Also, they would not know from which land or ancestors they are descended from. Big Ma laughs, I'm sorry chill, I'm reminded of old Thomas Fuller, a 14-year-old slow. They started calling the boy the Virginia calculator chill, he called South complex math problems in his head. Now, he could not read or write, so they started calling him a savant. Them white folks didn't believe he was intelligent, so they tested him. They asked him how many seconds there were in a year and a half. He said, 47,304,000 within two minutes. They said, okay, then they asked him, how many seconds a man has lived 70? Years, 17 days, and 12 hours old. He said, 2 trillion. 210,500,800 seconds within a minute and a half. They told him it was wrong, and old Thomas said as big my impersonated the slaves' voice, Top, Massa, you forget the leap year. When they added the leap years, it was correct. One man said that it was a pity at not an education equal to his genius, and he said and big man started talking like a slave game. No, Massa, it is best yet no learning, for many learned men be great fools. It proved to the abolitionists of that time as proof that enslaved Bacchetilians were equal to anakatas or computants in intelligence. Big Ma paused for a second, sign, those croquedas anakatas started slavery again in the Isles of California. When the Avenians first arrived and stationed themselves with the natives in the Congo forest of Africa, where they got their names Aveni, which means we asked for care, and behold, we got care. However, civil unrest with the Avenians and the great Congo impression occurred. 
De Avenian Strike to Destroy al Jupes este el DN. Ahora Dani Similar Markers in the DNA de Avenians. Attempted to kill al who at this rare and muted it DNA, but because of political reasons, they could not. Therefore, the Avenians banned anyone with such DNA. They could not live among the rest of the planet, making their lives a living hell through enslavement and other horrendous acts. If the rest of the world wanted their technology, they too would have to follow suit, or the Avenians would return home, and theirs would have exploded upon their departure. Of course, you know those people who carried this DNA were Bacchetilians, and we are their descendants. Centuries later, computants and anakatas trafficked and enslaved US for sex, services, labor, and even us thus. Pets by the thousands. They shipped many to the Isles of the Californias, where they were beaten and terrorized into submission before other anakatas brought them to do the bidding for the computants, and their hopes, sanitation for the bubbles cities in which the computants live. They had ships coming and going from those islands worldwide, especially in New York, processing them on that piece of land where that Statue of Liberty once stood ain't that ironic. Man, they had to do it with a passion. But it was Princess Anaya's idea, King Van Jenny Kebus action, and Abu Oxygen. Who shut that shit down? Kush shouted, Bigma. Bigma looked at Kush, boy, please, you know me, and your grandpa cursed. Kush said, he knew that he did, but not you. Bigma just smiled, well, if you don't know, now you know, you know. How in the hell I'm going to be married to someone for all these years and we not be the same? Boy, it out you learned that love, boy love is a hell of a thing. Kush laughed so hard that he started crying. Smiling, as she looked throughout her yard, Bigma pointed out plants to Kush that many thought were weeds, you know, people lose it. To mow their lawn and pass right by these herbs. Got my all this to a Louis, for some, they rather lose those chemicals, artificial chemicals that they are coming back for more. They were not killing you, they were keeping the symptoms at bay. Bigma grabbed a small wooden box and rolled up a cigarette as she said, This is that they're sticky, icky. Kush looked at Bigma, never cared of that. Bigma took a drag, once it gets a hold of ya, she started to cough in for a few seconds, stumbling your words, she said, It's icky, icky. Kush said, Bigma, that don't make sense, she said, Hey, you know, I'm ig already. This here is some wood with. I'm ig, but you know what the hell I'm talking about. Let me come down a bit and tell you something. Bigma, in depth out, stirred into space for a few minutes as Kush started picking some plants, and then Bigma took a deep breath. There was one particular ship called the Jorshu. As the story goes, this ship had an evil, greedy captain and his three sons, who had been collecting slabs for years. The business had become somewhat slow during this time, and they was cruising along the New Orleans Islands fishing when some of their slaves had an opportunity to escape and they did just that. This was when a Buxigun and Dan got fighting into the river and drifted down somewhere along that area. A Buxigun and Dan are both unconscious, floating through the Gulf of Mexico until they run aground on an island island near New Orleans. Those slaves that escaped approached them, hold up, son. You need to backtrack so you can understand a few things. Do you know about the Latrunculi War? Before Kush called answer, she continued, it was a war between man and artificial intelligence. The Latrunculi spread toxic biosardos and radioactive weaponry, killing a force of humanity. In desperation, men detonated a massive AMP that wrecked the entire plane. It destroyed the Latrunculi network and caused a massive earthquake that destroyed landmass worldwide. This was years before those Avenians came to Earth. California and large portion of western Nevada and Arizona fell into the sea. Everything past that point was basically Cayet the Isles of California. Few people lived on these islands, except for a few anacatas scattered here and there. Over ten, fewer, because of the radiation. On the edge of Arizona, right before you reached the Isles of California, there was a piece of land untouched by the devastation the beautiful Castle Dome and the Cove Mountains. A remote desert land with patches of green fertile lands here and their Cayet Cove. It has abundant wildlife and is a wonderland to see beautiful desert creatures in their natural habitat. Jackrabbits, rattlesnakes, bighorn sheep, mountain lions, coyotes, bats, desert tortoises, and so much more. This region is where we will continue, the Isles of the Californias.
the Anakatas gradually started moving back into the area, capturing, training, and selling Bacchetilians, a lucrative business worldwide. One particular family had a monopoly on this trade since its beginning. This family owned much of Long Island, New York, and a few surrounding areas and produced Bacchetilian slab farms for generations. Producing slabs pretty much like Boston did during the Trans-American slab trade. Using test poor folks for slab labor and whatever else they wanted them for. The Anakatas manipulated many countries like Ireland to give up their land and freedom for a better life in the Americas and worldwide. Their actions pleased the computants, and a pleased computants meant a pleased Avenians. The Avenians didn't eat like humans, however, anywhere, humans were their meals, in a sense. They lived of the prices and worship of the computants, but they feasted of their souls once they died. Therefore, no waste. By the Avenians being spiritually connected, when you fed one, you fed them all. However, humans said and may waste. One person produced up to 50 liters of feces and 500 liters of urine, but there was nowhere to put their waste. When the Babel cities were erected, the slabs always to do something with that waste. The Anakatas profited from the slabs by forcing them to clean the computants' waste. However, many slabs became ill, and some died because of a coli, salmonella, shigel, and many other things. New York City was the most extensive metro in the Western Hemisphere, which covered what we once knew as New Jersey, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, Connecticut, Northern Maryland, and Northeastern Pennsylvania. They had a waste station outside the bubble city as large as Micros, consisting of older towns surrounding New York. Burlington, Vermont, Long Island, New York, Richmond, Virginia, Columbus, Cleveland, Ohio, and the entire land of the Wheat Mountain National Forest. New York was a super bubble that reached Mexico and almost touched the dead region of the Ionosphere. So, the demand for slabs was significant. They used human waste for hydrogen fuel, brick making, which the Bacatilians made their home. The methane gas produced by human waste was tapped and used to produce biogas. Biogas was used to generate electricity for both domestic and industrial use. They also used it as a fertilizer to increase the production of food. Medically, human waste was used for a fecal transplant, a procedure used when a person has harmful bacteria in the gastrointestinal tract. It was more effective than antibiotics and less costly than getting rid of the infected organs. Using the faces of a healthy person would use tubing through the patient's anus and rectum or shoot frozen fecal matter through one's nose. Kush had a disturbed look on his face, and Big Man laughed. Chill, don't get in the medical field if that bothers you. Oh, and since we are made from dirt, we shall return to the dirt. Did you know that human waste also contains rare metals such as gold, silver, copper, palladium, and vanadium? They can extract about 700 pounds of gold from the faces of 1 million people using something they call leachets. Don't ask me what the fuck. Leachets is cause you still don't understand it. Using contaminated liquid to do something, just look it up, maybe you will understand it. You know that these metals play an essential part in our bodies, maintaining joints and transmitting electrical signals. Back in the day, millions who lacked clean water used human waste. Big Mac took a deep breath. Anyway, it was called the omniprocessor or something like that. You can look that up too, but they simultaneously produced energy and clean drinking water. Also, it was used as a cosmic radiation shield to protect humans. Human waste and water were made of sweets called excreta, which were used as a shield against radiation. Computants refused to use the waste from the so called deceased Bacatilians, so they created waste stations in their communities. He explained all of this to tell you this is what they used our people for, shit keepers. For many years, until a boxigun came along, the slave trade of Bacatilians went from abandoned to known. It ended slowly because the Avenians and many computants moved off world to different planets because of Banjini Kibu and his men, but a boxigun ended it all together. As you recall, they defeated the two troops of Avenians pursuing the last caravan with Hala and Anaya while they were heading to Telu, Louisiana, and Banjeni Kebu's son, Abu Oxigun, was lost along the way and floated toward New Orleans along with them. Two additional military forces, one from El Paso and another from Phoenix, were headed to Tucson to destroy the people. However, 
Of and his battalions met the military troops from El Paso while Van Genikibu and his oldest daughters, Hala and Anaya, caught them from the rear. The bastard and defeated Zide. Avenians met their fat. Friedrich and the rest of the 12th stack been while waiting on the Avenians from Phoenix to advance. Their advancement abruptly halted. Strangely, they stopped when Of and Van Genikibu defeated El Paso's troops. At a standstill, they just waited in the middle of the desert. The troops from Phoenix were larger than any of the forces they had battled before. Banjeni Kibu and his daughters rushed home but still no movement from the Phoenix forces as they drew tanks and larger vehicles. Still, they just stood there along Highway 8 Pulgadas, Arizona. Arizona. Banjeni Kibu sends Daniel, Queen, and the rest of their family, along with the battalion of hyenas and anyone who could control animals, to Cove National Wildlife Refuge to flank the city of Phoenix. They waited for them to advance but still nothing. After days of waiting and the curiosity of the standstill, Van Genikebu, John, Oz, and Friedrich investigated and surveyed the area where the Avenians stood while all bases throughout the region were on eagle alert, before they also got restless. The what gave Queen and her children time to reflect on a book Sigun's absence, they all traveled a few miles to a cliff overlooking one of the islands of the Californias, realizing that a book Sigun was gone. Sitting on a cliff, Hala and Anaya sit there reminiscing about Abuk Sigun as they said a prayer. Sabes, give our little brother the strength to go on in your name. Anaya pours a drop of her son into the ocean in honor of him. They canted from the sun hit the sea, and it glowed, expanding as far as the eye could see. Moments later, the plane shook from its core. At that exact moment, the forces of Phoenix started howling in pain, unaware of what had happened. At this time, Blessy appeared before Van Genikebu. The enemy has asked about permission to destroy you, but denied him. However, he was permitted to do what he could without causing your death. However, Savas has in your fastfulness and love and given you favor by placing a hand around the book Sigun and has shielded him from the great the saver's presence until he receives your gifts. As Mlesi spoke, there's rumble came. Van Jenny Kebuchurne to tell Mlesi, he shall do whatever Savas requires of me. But Mlesi had disappeared. Banjini Kibu calls out over the communicators to figure out what happened. At that moment, the Abenian's demonic forces were released from their barriers. They did not charge toward Tucson but toward Queen and Banjini Kibu's family. Billions of minions and demonic forces crawled over each other, both large and small, even the ones on Highway 8, and rushed toward the Isles of California. The minions' forces from the northern part of the world also headed in that direction. At that second, everyone's communication devices started flashing. The watchtower had triggered an emergency signal as the Avenians were directed toward Ken's location. Van Jenny Kebu and his battalion headed straight toward Ken's side while John, Friedrich, and Dove quickly followed behind the herd, destroying them. Just the presence of Friedrich alone incinerated the herd, but they kept tearing toward Queen. The Avenians tried to spread out, trying to avoid Friedrich, but Dove and John started picking them off. It was just too many. Banjini Kibwat made it to their location as his men slowly arrived. The speedster was already there. A swarm of bats appeared before Queen and Daniel at Cove National Wildlife Refuge, quickly transforming into a damn lavas. He appeared before them and swore an oath to kill Banjini Kibu's entire family because of what Anaya had done. Serious, Anaya attempted to throw water from the sea at him, but vanished. Anaya did not know what she had done. It took Banjini Kibu a few seconds to realize what Adam Lavas and Opidios were trying to do in Central Mexico. Banjini Kibu was about to do it with the stone around his neck, the sun. After he saw the fear on Adam Lavas' face as Anaya attempted to throw the water on him, Banjini Kibu and Queen looked at each other and smiled. They ordered the speedster to gather all who could control the elements to the islands. The herd of minions approached the islands from the east and north, not even ten minutes away. Banjini Kibu ordered everyone to saturate all rivers, lakes, or any body of water with one drop of the sun. As the Avenians approached, those who controlled the elements created thunderstorms who seen the water from the sea. At the same time, the speedster grabbed the people who controlled the elements and took them to the Gila River and they directed the storm's pain, the minions as they closed in on Queen and Jim. They made off and Friedrich's hope so much easier as the demonic forces quickly turned into a puff of black smoke. Before the Avenian could realize what was happening, 
it was too late, and they ran from the storm and were eventually driven off the cliffs into the sea, where they quickly became a path of dark smoke. The ocean became a sick as if an oil spill had devastated it. The black substance then turned into bubbling tar before dissipating into there. Killing of one third of Adam Lavaz's kingdom, Banjenik who ordered this done to all rivers, lakes, and seas throughout the entire region. From Indianola, Mississippi, to the Isle of California. As they made their way toward all the Avenian cities in the southern region like El Paso and Phoenix. Chill, the Avenians, and most of the computants soon vanished of world and super bubbles like New York. The computants thought it was the worst pandemic of 1918 and 2019 combined for the Avenians. Computants, unable to see the Avenians for what they were, saw them being what many described as a melted meat suit of flesh as millions died, which forced them to escape of world. The hatred toward the mestizos or Bacatilians became a right. The computants needed food and water to survive, and the Avenians needed the prices of the computants, which were their only required substances to survive. Computants had to wear as mad sweets or chic sweets when they came in close contact with the Avenians and vice versa. Eventually, the Avenians, computants, and Anakatas ride a new war against the mestizos and Balcatilians worldwide. For the first time, the South was now clear of the Avenians' presence as the Balcatilians, who moved from Arizona and live along Louisiana's Highway 65 from Lake Providence to Tellur, slowly moved back. Once Van Genikebu at the entire South trenched in the sun's rain. It took about six months before they departed, getting back to Arizona. However, many stopped pain because they came to love the area. Silence covered the room as Kush looked up and saw Big Matt falling asleep. Kush got up, tiptoed toward her, covered her with the shawl on the edge of her sofa, and left quietly. 